Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the recent discoveries and some of the more unusual discoveries coming from the cluster you see behind me. The closest globular cluster to planet Earth known as M4 or Messier 4. In essence, a collection of hundreds of thousands of different stars that have been orbiting around the central region for nearly 13 billion years. With more recent discoveries suggesting that there is something extremely unusual, somewhat compact and very massive in the center that the scientists are currently unable to explain. Possibly some kind of a black hole or maybe something entirely different. So let's discuss this cluster and the discovery and also talk about the potential implication for astronomy. But first I actually wanted to discuss the cluster itself. Because intriguingly, this is one of the most iconic clusters you can technically see with a relatively cheap commercial telescope. It would be located somewhere in the constellation of Scorpius and is extremely close to the very bright Antares that you see right there and overall looks relatively large in the night skies. Its approximate total size is actually somewhat similar to the full moon. But it's obviously not as bright, as a matter of fact it is relatively dim. Nevertheless, at the approximate distance of 7000 light years away from planet Earth, this is the closest such object and because it's about 75 light years across, it appears relatively big in the night skies. But you are unlikely to see it without a telescope or relatively powerful binoculars. But in a telescope it would resemble something like this, a fuzzy ball of light. And historically this was the first ever cluster where the scientists were able to see individual stars, to some extent confirming the overall nature of these unusual objects. But despite of this, these objects are still really mysterious. As a matter of fact, we've recently discussed this in a previous video, where the main point was that we actually do not understand the origin of globular clusters. For the most part, because they all seem to have relatively similar properties, they all seem to be approximately 13 billion years old, and they all seem to possess a lot of ancient stars. None of them contain relatively young stars or any star formation. So it's as if all of these globular clusters were actually created around the same period of time sometime in the existence of the universe. Which by the way was to some extent the main conclusion from the recent study. As a matter of fact the recent study also established that there's a very high chance that the center of these unusual objects was most likely some kind of a really ancient massive star. A star that we sometimes refer to as population 3 star. And a star that over time might have collapsed into something really massive such as an intermediate mass black hole. A strange type of a black hole that we actually have not physically discovered just yet. So far in the last few years the scientists have only seen hints of these. And these of course would be black holes that are not as massive as the ones in the center of a galaxy but much more massive than a typical black hole produced by a supernova of a massive star. And so for many years scientists speculated that we might be able to find these intermediate mass black holes deep inside various global clusters such as Massey 4. In other words, the speculation here was that somewhere in the center, most likely directly in the center, there is some kind of a mass that's a lot more massive than a typical star that serves as the foundation for the entire cluster. And because this cluster is the closest, it would make this a perfect target to investigate these ideas, these propositions, and to try to see if there is actually anything in the center. And this is of course one of approximately 150 different global clusters so far discovered in the Milky Way. This one is actually a little bit closer to the center of the galaxy with a single orbit taking approximately 116 million years to move across the Milky Way. Although intriguingly it also has a relatively eccentric orbit and so it does pass relatively close to the center which very likely causes tidal disruption which possibly then causes some stars to escape from the cluster itself. But that's of course just a proposition and a theory and has not been proven yet. But it basically suggests that this cluster must have been bigger and more massive in the past. And so overall this is a very interesting opportunity to study all sorts of different physics that we still do not understand. And it's already been quite successful at providing a lot of information. For example in this observation from just a few years ago, the Hubble discovered these objects you see right here. Some of the oldest stars in the entire galaxy and in this case white dwarfs. Extremely dim white dwarfs orbiting all around this particular cluster but barely visible at all. And this is super super impressive because the actual luminosity coming from these white dwarfs is somewhat similar to a relatively dim light bulb if this light bulb was placed on the moon and observed from planet Earth. 
That's how ridiculously powerful the Hubble is, and that's what it was able to observe a few years ago. And so the discovery of these unusual white dwarfs imply that there are probably a lot of them all over the cluster. As a matter of fact, some of them can even maybe form the core. Or in other words, maybe the entire center of this particular cluster is nothing but a bunch of white dwarfs orbiting around one another, creating the central mass and the central foundation. With some other objects potentially being neutron stars as well. Some pulsars have already been discovered here, so we know they exist as well. And so the question that the scientists had in this case was, so what exactly forms the center in order to basically preserve the globular shape and in order to avoid any gravitational interaction that can potentially kick out other stars from the entire system? Or just to rephrase this, what exactly keeps this particular globular cluster so spherical for billions of years? Now one potential explanation was of course these 13 billion year old white dwarfs. These are obviously some of the oldest white dwarfs we've ever discovered and potentially some of the oldest stars in the entire galaxy. But the recent analysis calculating the total mass inside the core suggested that there is actually a lot of mass here, possibly up to about 800 solar masses, which would basically require over a thousand white dwarfs in orbit in a relatively small space. Now in this image you see a couple of dozen, but detecting a thousand white dwarfs in a relatively small space would have most likely happened a long time ago. So it's unlikely that whatever is in the middle is a white dwarf or a combination of white dwarfs. And so it could be a thousand neutron stars or possibly a few hundred stellar mass black holes. And so that was pretty much the main purpose behind the paper you see right here. The scientists wanted to physically find out what's most likely happening in the middle of this cluster and thus by extension explain other clusters as well. In this case, focusing on some of the data from the iconic Gaia telescope, that's able to provide exact observation of the motion of the stars, even if they're relatively far away. But also combining this with recent observations from the Hubble Space Telescope. And so by measuring the velocities of stars extremely close to the center, the scientists determined that there's definitely something that's relatively massive right in the middle. Nearly 800 solar masses. This was of course based on the observations of star velocities of various objects right here in the middle. And they actually use approximately 6,000 different stars in order to work out the potential mass right in the middle. But exactly what these stars were orbiting was not actually very clear. The only thing that was clear was that it was something that was not particularly large, no more than 3,000 astronomical units across. Just to give you a bit of a visual guidance, that's essentially where the so-called Oort cloud begins in the solar system. And so this initial modeling suggested that it was something relatively compact, but it didn't really tell us what. And so even though this technically could be an intermediate mass black hole, an intriguing discovery from the cluster known as Palomar 5 just a few years ago, showed us that it can possibly be something else. Here the scientists actually identified a cluster of smaller black holes orbiting around one another. Now it was only 20 black holes with an overall mass of less than 100 solar masses, but it's still possible. It's possible for this to be just a cluster of small massive objects and not intermediate mass black hole. Likewise, it can be something entirely different, a compact mass that we don't have an explanation for yet. Maybe dark matter, maybe something else. So for example, if this is a black hole, especially intermediate mass black hole, we should see something else, possibly x-rays, maybe some other emissions, something else should be coming from the center. Nothing has been discovered yet. As a matter of fact, nothing has ever been seen coming from the center, implying that whatever it is in the center, it seems to be pretty much inactive. And whatever this is in the middle here, it seems to be way more compact than any previous discoveries. And so it's definitely something that's just really small in size, but something that is really massive. But at the moment, just no good explanation. So once again, a black hole should be visible in possibly other frequencies because of the interaction with additional matter. Compact stars, such as white dwarfs or even neutron stars, should be emitting something else as well that possibly could be detected with Hubble telescope. And a cluster of smaller black holes, based on various models and simulations, would actually result in a lot more stars potentially escaping and in a slightly different distribution of overall velocities. So at the moment there's actually no explanation that fits everything. Nobody definitively knows what's in the middle of this unusual cluster and of course a lot of other clusters as well. Now intermediate mass black hole is still the best possible candidate 
But because so far no detection of any other frequencies has been found from any of the clusters, it just doesn't have a really good explanation for why all of these intermediate mass black holes seem to be also quiet. And so for all we know, it's maybe some other physics we just still do not understand, possibly in regards to the motion of stars in these clusters, maybe in regards to how they were originally created 13 billion years ago, something that doesn't happen anymore, or just another mystery to add to the mystery book, or in my case, to the very large playlist that should be available in the description. And so until future discoveries, we're not going to know much more. For now, we're going to assume that it is maybe an intermediate mass black hole, but that answer could change in the future. Until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.